Americans are so rude and intrusive. Good morning. Oh. Mom, you can't do that to people, for heaven's sake. So what are you doing here at the crack of dawn? You, you come in here and you're all dressed up. Why are you all dolled up like that? Lily, I have a tip for you. Mother to daughter. You might want to rethink this morning attitude problem you've got before you marry Ted. In fact, you might want to rethink the whole thing. Well, I guess he's just going to have to live with me warts and all. Well, he's very lucky because you're the cutest wart I ever saw. Thanks. Could we have this discussion later, please? Come on, we're late. You need to get dressed. Well, this looks like my door. Thought maybe I came to the wrong house last night. Late for what? Your appointment to see the minister. Does she come with a clue? What minister? Uh, 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 Isn't she silly? I the minister that's going to marry you and Ted. Well, we haven't picked one yet. Well, lucky for you, you have a mother that thinks of every little last detail. Tell me you didn't do this. She didn't do this, did she? Well, she actually... Well, of did course I of... did it. You <sighs> have to go. Uh, it, it's a uh, tradition. Who's? Everybody's. You sit down and the minister will tell you and Ted what you need to know to have a happy life together. Ted! I don't see a Ted. Do you see a Ted? Lionel, how about you? Do you see Ted around? Lionel's not here either, actually. Aren't you listening when I called you last night, Mom? I told you Ted is missing. He's nowhere to be found, and he's probably off with another woman. Who cares? Excuse me? Well, you're just probably overreacting. Besides, he's made it clear who's important to him. It's you he has to marry. I mean, he's asked you to marry him. You obviously mean a lot to him. This other woman, she doesn't mean anything. It's just a last-minute fling. You know how men are. They're all pigs. What? What are you talking about, Mom? Y you have no idea what you're talking about. I have called, and I have left messages all over town for Ted. He has not returned any of them. And that's besides the point. Damn it, Mom. You had no right to call and make this stupid meeting with some minister without consulting me first. Okay, I should have consulted you, but what's the big deal? How couples do it? Well, not this one. Cancel it. What? Lily, come I on. mean it, Mom. Cancel the stupid meeting right now. Mason. I tried to stop them, Your Honor. Mason, please. I, I will take full responsibility for this, but we have to talk to you. It's all right. Thank you very much. What is so urgent? We realize this is highly improper. It, but the circumstances are exceptional here. I'm, I'm begging you, Mason. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll, I'll, I'll go and apologize to the court. I'll pay a fine, whatever. But you've got to let me into that courtroom. I have to be there for BJ. I feel the same way. We were up all night agonizing over this. BJ needs our support. Mason, she needs us in there. You're a parent, Mason. I'm appealing to you on that level. Please, let us in that courtroom. I understand your dismay as a parent and as a human being. But frankly, I'm not inclined to grant your request. Let me make sure I've got this right. We'll plead guilty with extenuating circumstances. I'll base our defense on justifiable homicide and see if we can get out of this with probation contingent on psychiatric counseling or community service. Okay. Are you sure? Because I'm... I don't want you to do something that you feel is fundamentally wrong. No, I'm sure. After my testimony, it's our only choice. If we don't do this, I'll be convicted for sure. Are you terribly disappointed in me, Julia? I'm not at all disappointed in you, BJ. I know that you believed in my innocence, and that's why you took the case. I took the case because I wanted you to have the best defense possible. BJ, we don't really know what happened the night on the desert. I think that you're very strong, and I think that you're very courageous. And I don't see how anyone could ever be disappointed in you. I'll second that. <laughs> all right. Hi, Skylar. That was my favorite patient. Fine, I'm getting better. It's good to see you. You too. You're looking good. Have you been meditating? Yes, I have. Every day, just like you said, it really helps. Good. Where's Warren? He's out of town, hopefully. 
finding out something that will put us all on the other side of this. I'll see you inside. Okay. Oh, it's all riding on you. You know what to do? Yes, I do. You up for this? Absolutely. How can you say that? How can you do this to BJ? Any decision I make is done with BJ's best interests at heart. Not from where I'm standing. Mason, we're her parents. She needs us. You sit there behind that big fancy desk of yours wearing that judicial robe don't, and... Don't, don't, don't. No! No, he's passing a sentence on BJ that's going to totally isolate her until the most frightening moment of her life. How that's supposed to help her totally escapes me. Jody, you understand the way the system works. And I expect you to also understand my position. I have an obligation, morally and legally, to presume BJ's innocence until proven otherwise, and to protect that presumption of that innocence. That's why I do not think you should be there. I'm afraid you're going to have to explain that to me one more time. Maurice, we shouldn't be having this conversation. You're both officers of the law. You know how extremely inappropriate this is. We, uh, we understand that. We were just hoping maybe you'd make an exception for us. You know, this outburst is a perfect illustration of my dilemma. Jody, you're a volatile woman. You're prone to explode when all the right buttons are pushed. I'm not saying that's wrong, or that you have no right to feel angry and frustrated. But think what kind of toll this takes, this kind of behavior on your daughter. She's fighting for her life right now, literally. <gasps> now, God willing, she will never have to face such an ordeal ever again. But these emotional outbursts are a distraction at best, and at worst, they could bias the jury against B.J. And I will not allow anyone, you or anyone, into that courtroom if I expect to see the kind of behavior I have seen thus far. Not for the sake of decorum, but for the sake of B.J. I hear you loud and clear, Mason. And I speak for the two of us when I say the outbursts are over. They're <laughs> over. We have to be there for BJ. And if controlling ourselves is the only way you're going to allow that to happen, then you have my word. All right, I'll reopen the court to spectators, but if I hear so much as a loud exhalation of breath... No, no, it's not going to happen. All right, it's time to get back. I'll see you inside. Mason. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Well, you always were better at common sense than I was. <laughs> Just balance. That's always what we had going for us. Our daughter's waiting. Right. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated. Please state your name for the record. Dr. Skyler Gates. Dr. Gates, you're a psychiatrist. Back patient, aren't you? That's right. Are you familiar with the defendant? Yes, she's one of my patients. Is it fair to say that you can offer testimony as to BJ's state of mind? Yes. When did you start seeing the defendant professionally? Right after the events that led to this trial occurred. Is it fair to say that the major focus of your discussions were about Frank Goodman? Very much so. As you came to know B.J., what observations did you make about her? Well, she lacks self-esteem. She feels that it's very difficult to believe that someone could love her. She exhibits a tendency, even a willingness, to shoulder the blame for the misfortunes of everyone around her. Based on these observations, were you able to draw any conclusions about B.J.'s character? Yes. Would you please tell the court what they were? B.J. Walker exhibits all the traits commonly associated with abuse victims. 
You say that with such conviction, Dr. Gates. Would you consider yourself an expert on the subject of victim profiles? Yes, I've written several articles and I've been accredited by several universities as an expert on the subject. Well, then perhaps you can shed not only light on BJ's profile, but on Frank Goodman's profile as well. Objection! Sustained. I'll meet with both counsels in chambers. good no explanations are necessary your honor this is about smoke and mirrors about trickery and deceit it's about sneaking an expert witness on the stand one defense counsel is well aware I haven't had the least amount of time to prepare for we're listening counsel You're taking over, Mom. You're acting like this is your wedding, not mine. Really, I am just trying to make things right for you. I want your wedding day to be a memory you'll always cherish. Well, I'm not even sure there's going to be a wedding day. This whole thing is a stupid idea anyway. This sounds like a heart-to-heart -heart waiting to happen. I'm going to scoot... What are you talking about there's not going to be a wedding? I have told you a hundred times, Mom. Ted and I are not in love. It's like an arrangement, like some friendly business merger that can be canceled at any time by either party. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. Given time, uh, miracles can happen. I mean, look at me and Lionel. Ted and I aren't you and Lionel. Well, you could be. I'm going to give you the biggest, most beautiful wedding Santa Barbara's ever seen. Mom, please. Lily, let me do this for you. You didn't have a very good childhood, thanks to me. And I, I want to have this opportunity to make it up to you. So go. Find your fiancé and make up with him. I'm going to go look at China. <sighs> Woman's impossible. This whole situation is impossible. My daughter, the Capwell. So, how are you, honey? Pretty depressed, Mom. Depressed? What do you have to be depressed about? You married one of the richest men in the world. You live in a beautiful mansion. You have servants at your beck and call, and Cece hates you with a passion. What more could you want? Well, my husband would be nice. Your husband. All right. Now that you mentioned it, I haven't seen him around for a while. Where is he? He went on a trip. Trip? Huh. Don't let that get you down. That's the way Capwell men are. Business, business, business. No, Mom, this isn't business. He went on vacation with one of his girlfriends. Not Angela Cassidy again. No, no, no. She was last month. This month, it's Lisa. Lisa Castillo? Well, that's outrageous. Just what kind of an arrangement do you and Ted have? What kind of arrangement, indeed? <sighs> Honey. It's gonna be okay. What do you think they're doing in there, Mom? I don't know. But Julia's a smart woman. She knows what she's doing. I'll tell you something, Julia's crafty. But I know a trick when I see one. Unfortunately, Mason saw it too. 
Counselor, do you wish to respond to the district attorney's charges? You bet I do. First of all, I'd like to remind the DA that I did not create this scenario. It was not I who petitioned the court for a ruling that left me little or no time to prepare a proper defense. It was not I who imposed a time limit of a lousy 24 hours in order to prepare what is, in fact, an entirely new case. I'm simply doing the best job I can for my client under impossible circumstances. You see, I see a window of opportunity. I go through it. That's my job. As it happens, Dr. Gates is an expert on the subject that goes straight to the heart of my strategy. Am I supposed to ignore this out of some arcane deference to courtroom formality when my client just sits there patiently waiting for the boat to take her up the river? Your Honor, my entire case is predicated on the fact that Frank Goodman sexually molested B.J. Walker. We have an expert witness who can testify to the personality traits of the victim as well as the abuser. Do you expect me to do anything other than use his knowledge to help my client in any way that's possible? My client deserves the best possible defense, and this is not a cliché. This is a constitutional right. Is this court really prepared to deny her that? She makes a good case. I'm going to allow the testimony. Your Honor, I must strenuously object. Which is duly noted, Mr. Arnold. Shall we return to court? Nice maneuver, Counselor. Why, I have no idea what you mean. Oh, Julia, never kid a killer. I tried the same thing myself once early in my career. What happened? Didn't work. Why not? Unsympathetic judge. Maybe you ought to count your blessings. So even though I had never met Frank Goodman personally, I have made somewhat of a study of him. Consisting of what? I've read his writings, police reports, stakeout diaries, that sort of thing. I've studied departmental accounts and various newspaper articles concerning Frank Goodman's heroic exploits while he was with the Coral Gables Police Department. There were even a few videotapes of interviews that Frank Goodman did when he was up for a promotion within the department. I've studied these extensively. Are you able to offer an expert opinion of the deceased based on your observations? Yes. Would you please tell the court what they were? Frank Goodman exhibited traits of someone who himself had been molested. For example? The self-deprecating manner he adopted indicates a clear lack of self-esteem. He took inordinate risks on the job, which indicates a possible secret death wish. On some level, sexual abusers hate themselves for what they do. They feel unworthy and can sometimes court their own demise. Even if Frank Goodman had been abused, how do you see this as relevant to this case? That's very simple. The statistics are horrifyingly consistent. 85% of molesters have been molested themselves. Dr. Gates, I have one more question, and this is going back to your observations of my client. You said that she suffered from something you term hysterical amnesia. Is that correct? Yes, and eventually she'll remember everything. Eventually? She hasn't yet. I'm sure of that. So her protestations of not being able to remember what happened the night Frank Goodman was killed were not fabricated, correct? Correct. I've had her under hypnosis several times, and I'm certain that she has not fully pieced that night together. Dr. Gage, would you please describe hysterical amnesia to the court? Breaking it down in layman's terms, B.J. Walker suffered a severe trauma. It was so devastating that her subconscious mind took over to protect her and blocked her memory. And then this would support the theory that B.J. was in extreme emotional distress the night that Frank was killed, Most correct? definitely. Thank you. No further questions. Your witness. This question of hysterical amnesia intrigues me, Dr. Gates. Uh, do you have any idea the moment this condition manifested itself? I'm not sure I know what you mean. You testified that B.J. suffered this so-called amnesia as the result of some traumatic experience, yes? Not so-called, and yes. I assume you're referring to the abuse allegedly heaped on this poor girl by Officer Goodman. I object to the use of the phrase, this poor girl, in the attempt to characterize my client in a facetious manner. Sustained. Forgive me. Dr. Gates, 
Is it your testimony that B.J. Walker was sexually abused and that the experience left her so traumatized that she was not herself at the time of the shooting? Yes. I'd like to run another theory past you and see if that might also apply. All right. Is it possible that the traumatic act of shooting Frank Goodman might have brought on this condition? The act? Well, could she have been perfectly sane, perfectly normal, right up to the moment when Officer Goodman's life was so cruelly taken? <clears throat> I suppose it's possible. Yes or no, Dr. Gates? Yes. Can you tell this court with any real degree of certainty how sane B.J. Walker was when Frank Goodman was killed? Your answer, Dr. Gates? No, I cannot. Don't mind me. What are you doing here, Lionel? Uh, your mother asked me to wait and keep an eye on you. Are you serious? Mine is not to reason why. What in the hmm? world? Uh, what are you doing? This is it. This is what? This. It's that ceremonial thingamajig. Huh. Wait a minute. You, you know what this is? I bet I... Wait, you didn't think I was into old statues? <laughs> no. No, Louie, I'm, I'm serious. You've seen this before? Yes, Ted has it. He is doing a dig with his dad, and uh, they unearthed the moldy old thing. Wait a minute. Huh? In Santa Barbara? Yep. No, you're mistaken. No, I'm not. No, it's got it's got to be. You can't you can't do. Why? No, why? <laughs> why is that so unimaginable? Because. If that were true, this would be the southernmost sighting of this artifact in archaeological history. Wait a minute. Ted has it. Where? At the dig. Maybe I've been a little overreactionary. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over there. I bet I'll find him there. Wait, 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 <coughs> Lily, Lily, wait a minute. What? If, if he has this, I wanna see it. I can come? Yes. Well, let's go. Yes, let me take all the best place settings out of the store. You just have to be careful. It wasn't very good for us, was it? No. Arnold managed to hone in on our weakest point without missing a beat. Dr. Gates, this 85% figure you quoted, is it reliable? Yes, absolutely. In study after study, 85% of molesters have been molested themselves. A sad statement on our society, if I may say so. I'll allow you the sentiment, but not the conclusion about the deceased. After all, if 85% were molested, that leaves 15% that weren't. Isn't it entirely possible that even if Frank were a victim, he might well fall into that minority? Yes, it's possible, but highly unlikely. Based on my observation of the case, B.J. Walker was definitely an abuse victim, and from what I've gathered of Frank Goodman, so was he. The link is too strong to be dismissed lightly. The facts are, Dr. Gates, and let's try and stick to them, please, that you have no proof that Frank was a victim. None. Outside of your rather distant, and might I add, posthumous observations of him. One other thing I'd like to uh, go over, this business of hypnotherapy. I would imagine that these sessions must have been fairly intense. You would be correct. Uh, were you able to draw any conclusions as to B.J. Walker's guilt or innocence during these sessions? Well, those sessions are confidential. I'm not Dr. at liberty Dr. Gates, to you waived your rights to confidentiality when you agreed to testify here today. Answer the question. What was the question? I don't think I understood it. Based upon your observations of the defendant under hypnosis, do you think that B.J. Walker killed Officer Goodman or not? 
It's impossible to say for certain. Your Honor. Dr. Gates, answer the question. I thought it was possible at one time. No further However, questions. Dr. Gates, did B.J. ever admit to killing Frank Goodman under hypnosis? No, never. As I stated earlier, she does not have a clear picture of what happened that night. No further questions. You may step down, Dr. Gates. Well, it was tough, but I think we won. Are you ready for what comes next? some company or would you rather be alone company would be good I'm scared mom I know honey you have to get up on that witness stand talk about being abused after I spent all these years blocking it out pretending it never happened the whole concept Talking about it in front of people, in front of strangers, goes against everything I've thought about myself since I was 10 years old. Well, sometimes the things that are hardest for us to do are the, the things that eventually set us free. I mean, secrets can act like a slow kind of poison. They can eat away at you day after day, a little piece here, a little piece there, until eventually you're dead inside. Yeah, I've been there. Well, maybe getting up on that witness stand today will be the last step in cleaning out the poison so you're able to get on with things. You really think so? Well, I'm no expert. I'd like to think it's possible. I guess there's no way around it then. Well, sure there is. You can go to Julia and tell her you can't do it. I mean, she'd understand. No. No, I have to do this. I think you're right. It's something I had to do for myself. Miss Walker, you are still under oath. B.J., I know how difficult this is for you. And you feel free to take as much time as you need. However, I need to know, and this court needs to know, the nature of your relationship with Frank Goodman. And how many years the relationship spanned. He was my godfather. Were you close to him? Yes. Did you love him? Yes. Did you trust him? Yes. B.J., you said that he was your godfather. What was the extent of your relationship? I know that this is very painful for you, but the jury needs to understand the dynamics of your relationship so that they may deliver a fair and objective verdict. So... I'm going to have to ask you again, B.J., what exactly was the extent of your relationship with Frank Goodman? The relationship was sexual in nature. Order. When did the sexual aspect of your relationship start, B.J.? When I was 10 years old. And how did the sexuality manifest itself? He would, um, touch me inappropriately. And he would kiss me. 
would make me kiss him? Was there intercourse? No. He felt that as long as... as long as he didn't penetrate me, that he could pretend that what he was doing was all right. Objection. Sustained. B.J., when did these incidents of abuse occur? <sighs> Sometimes he would volunteer to stay with me and my brother when my parents wanted to go out to um, a movie or something. He would always put my brother Sawyer to bed, usually as soon as possible. He would say that I was the oldest, so I could stay up later. And then when we were alone, he would start the games. That's what he called them, the games. BJ, go on. This from the woman who begged to be there for her daughter? Look, if I can't show any emotion in that disgusting room. I have to be able to go somewhere. Fine. You need to vent your anger. Nobody understands that better than I do. It's all I can do to sit there and listen to BJ tell that horror story and not want to rip that courtroom apart bench by bench. Just but somehow, I got the distinct impression that we agreed earlier that supporting BJ was a little more important than these outbursts. I should have taken care of it myself. I just, I should... I should have taken care of him. I, sh I Joe. should have known. Joe, don't do this. I'm going to go back in there. DJ, please continue. I thought that by the time I got into high school, it would stop. But it didn't. If anything, it became more frequent. It seemed like every time I turned around, I found myself alone in a room with him. B.J., during all those years, what did you think of Frank? What was I supposed to think? He was the most trusted friend my parents had. And after so much time, it became more and more difficult to... to fight him. Had you fought him off before? No, not really. When I got older, I would try to distract him. I, I would talk about school or sports or, or anything that I could think of. But for the longest time, it, I never even realized that I had the right to object. Even though that I knew that somehow it wasn't natural. Objection. Your Honor, I'm sure that all of us here are very sorry for whatever this girl imagined she went through, but I fail to see the point of this testimony. I have already made my ruling, Mr. Arnold, and you are overruled. Proceed, counsel. B.J., I know how difficult this has been for you. This has been a very long day, so I'm going to, I'm going to make this as easy for you as possible. So I'm going to move on. We all have heard the graphic details of what happened to B.J. over all these years leading up to the night of the confrontation. So, B.J., will you tell us, please, about that night? That night? So much that I don't know. Do the best you can. I know that I hated him for what he had done to me, for what he had tried to do to my mom and Cruz. I know that I wanted him out of my life. I know that I was scared. He... He had figured out that, that I had tricked him and he was angry at me. God, was he angry. I just wanted to get away from him in the worst way. That's it. I've tried to remember. I, Things started to come back, but I, I'm just not sure. B.J., try harder. Try to think what it was like right before Frank died, what you were like. I wish I knew. I would give anything if I knew. I've just been pushed so far. I've never felt so disassociated from myself, from reality. Thank you. 
Your Honor, I would like to request a brief recess so that my client can collect herself. Object. Your Honor, I think that the witness seems composed enough. I'd like to start my cross-examination, if that pleases the court. Mm -hmm. Sustained. Miss Walker, to be so confused, so, how did you put it, disassociated? It must be tough. Confused about your feelings, confused about the facts. Your Honor, does the district attorney plan to ask a question anytime soon? Mr. Arnold, we'll get on with it. Get to the point. Miss Walker, is it possible that since you are so confused about that night, maybe you're also confused about a lot of other things? Such as? Your entire relationship with Officer Goodman? No, it is not possible. I know what he did to me. I wish I could be as sure, Miss Walker. Your Honor. Your Honor, this witness is the one who's come to us. Pleading confusion over this and amnesia over that, surely I should be allowed to question her veracity. Overruled. Proceed. Miss Walker, it's painfully clear that you have suffered some trauma. But is it trauma from being abused or trauma from committing the cold-blooded murder of a man who never did anything but love you? No. Trauma from a murder committed because you had seduced a man that you were now afraid was prepared to leave you forever. That is not true. I did not seduce that monster, and don't you dare say that I did. Ted? Damn it, I was so sure he'd be here. What's the matter? Oh my God, it is it. But it's broken. Will you please forget about the stupid statue and help me find Ted? Huh? Lionel, Humpty Dumpty, it ain't. Let's go. Wait, be careful with that, Lily. You can't. Lily, Lily, please, please. Give me that before anything else happens to her. Come on. What is it with you and Ted in this thing? You act like it's alive or something. Yes. Here. Uh. Lionel, I can't believe Ted turned out to be such a typical male. No phone call, no note, just a disappearing act. Lily, do me a favor. Don't jump to conclusions before you know something happened, okay? Well, that's just what I'm afraid of. I think I know exactly what happened. Well, in the immortal words of that beautiful woman I married, so what? If you really, really care about him, give him some room to breathe, huh? Maybe you're right. I I'm not, you know, I'm not being a jealous, ranting fishwife here, Lionel. I'm not. I just, I need to know he's okay. Because right now, I feel like he's just dropped off the face of the earth. Let's look over here. Yeah. Sit down, Miss Walker. I've had enough of his slimy insinuations. Frank Goodman put me through hell for most of my life. Then show us proof. The man isn't here to defend himself. He's being slandered left and right by you, by your attorney. And the reason you feel free to say whatever comes to your mind is that you're confident that there's no one here to contradict you. Isn't that the case, Miss Walker? You are a liar. You are a disgusting, despicable liar. And I'm not going to sit here and just listen to this. You... You what? This is unconscionable, Your Honor. Mr. Arnold, that may well be the most shameful exhibition of witness badgering I have ever seen. Ms. Caplow's objection is, of course, sustained. And I am ordering you to back off unless you wish to spend the night in jail. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Miss Walker? Are you suffering from extreme emotional distress at this moment? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Please answer the question. No. Is it possible to conclude, then, that you are quite capable of losing control when in your right mind? When you are not suffering from trauma, but in a normal state? Like that night on the Mesa? When you were with Officer Goodman? 
and there was no one else around, just the two of you? It wasn't that way. How was it different, Miss Walker? It just was, that's all. I'd like to believe you, Miss Walker. But you and Miss Capwell have failed to offer this court one single shred of real evidence to support these accusations. Psychological profiles, statistics, expert opinion, but no proof. Can you prove that Frank Goodman molested you? No, you can't. What would you do if your wife was having an affair with a woman? Today on Jenny Jones, you'll meet a man who was locked out of his house for three days while his wife was having a love fest with another woman. Married women having gay affairs today at 2.